Hey Chem30, so let's see if we can't get this uh, organic chemistry unit finished off here. So we're going to omit a few things here in chapter 10. Uh, like we said, most of the oil and gas stuff really is so specific uh, to your career needs. Uh, anything that we cover here in chemistry 30 will easily be covered again if you go on to chemical engineering and stuff like that at the university. So we're going to get rid of 10.1. If you wish, you can read through it. There isn't much in the way of any sort of diploma level content there anyway. So that one is gone. What we're going to do is we're going to start with 10.2 and we're going to take a look at two things here. Uh, the first is something known as the organic halides, which is um, a derivative or a functional group. And then we're going to take a look at the addition and substitution reactions that are related to making and creating them. So, where are we right now? We've done all of this. Everything that you see here was chapter 9. What we're looking at now is chapter 10. And we're going to take a look at what are known as the hydrocarbon derivatives. The hydrocarbon derivatives are things that are going to have, obviously, hydrocarbons or hydrogen and carbon, but they're going to contain at least one other element. All right, so we talk about these arrangements or elements that we will start to see within them as functional groups. We're not going to present to you more than one functional group at any one time, so you're going to learn these things in relative isolation. The combinations of them will come if you uh, pursue organic chemistry further beyond high school. And so there are four that we're going to take a look at. The organic halides, which is what we're starting with. We'll take a look at alcohols and what uh, arrangement of elements makes those. We'll take a look at organic acids in particular, the carboxylic acids. And then finally, we'll take a look at all those natural and artificially occurring colors and flavors like blue raspberry uh, as our esters. Okay, so let's move on. And so the organic halides are sometimes referred to as the alkyl halides. The reason why we call them an alkyl group sometimes is because your halogens can only form one bond, much like your CH3 groupings that you had with the alkyl branches, your methyl, ethyl, and propyl groups. So they can only really be attachments onto the parent chain. What are the halides? Well, that's just another way of referring to the halogens right here in group 17 or 7A. All right, your fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Okay, so that is your uh, halogen group called the halides here in organic chemistry. And so we're just going to take a look at how these guys ultimately attach. What's important to realize here is that a halogen is our first example of what is known as a functional group. Now your functional group is a unique and characteristic arrangement of atoms within an organic molecule. So far, the only things that have really changed our hydrocarbons so far is the number and location of uh, alkyl branches or the presence of double or triple bonds. In addition, we also took a look at the a possibility of benzene or cyclic structures. But they've all been, up to this point, only carbon and hydrogen arrangements. Now we're looking for characteristic arrangements that will usually involve some other element. And in this case, it is going to be the halogens, usually given as X when we take a look at our general formula. So in this case, X is going to be at least one halogen attached to your hydrocarbon chain. And right here for R, R is the organic generic representation for any hydrocarbon. So R could be a one carbon group like meth. It could be a three carbon group like prope. It could be a, you know, four carbon with a double bond. So something like butene. This could be anything. And then we have at least one halogen attached to it. So the general structure of Rx doesn't really tell us very much. It's just there to kind of shorthand these alkyl halides. What are alkyl halides? <clears throat> well, <coughs> Because of the range in electronegativities for the halides, these can be either polar or nonpolar. Um, most of these things are considered to be poisons. They're highly toxic, often carcinogenic. Uh, they're usually quite damaging to the environment. And so environmental examples of this one would be your CFCs, which were those 
uh, early style refrigerants. DDT, which you heard about in your biology class, is a pesticide, and PCBs, which we know when they leak are quite damaging, which is coolants and stuff like that in your electrical transformers, and also many forms of plastic. Okay, so eh, it's more of a connection to your diploma exam, but it's nice to talk about. How do we name and draw these things? Well, organic halides, or your alkyl halides for short, are going to be named exactly the same way you've uh, named any alkane, alkene, alkyne, uh, benzene or cyclic structure. All of that stays the same. Your alkyl halides can only ever be branches, so therefore they can only ever be a prefix within the name. Now our prefixes so far have been hydrocarbon groups such as methyl, ethyl, propyl, and butyl. Our uh, prefixes now can be a little bit expanded. If I have fluorine, uh, then I would use fluoro as its prefix, chlorine would be chloro, bromine bromo, and iodine iodo. So when we take a look at the rules, you'll notice that they stay identical to what we have done before. The only thing we now have is this alkyl branch. And so we're looking for these representative molecules. Still identify the root by looking for the longest continuous chain, but in this case, it must contain the halogen that you see. This is really similar to what we did before with alkenes and alkynes, where we looked at the longest continuous chain, and it had to contain the double or the triple bond. Please number the parent chain from the end closest to the halogen. Okay, so this is more important than anything else we've seen. It drastically changes the function and characteristics of the hydrocarbon, so it gets the most importance. Number and name the branches using the appropriate numbers and names. And for the alkyl halides, just remember that you have these different prefixes. Okay, the numbers will go in the same way they did before, no spaces, use dashes when there's just one number to separate out names from numbers. If you have multiple things, don't forget your last prefixes of di, tri, tetra, and penta, and use the commas to separate those numbers. So, in the next video, what we'll do is we'll go through the naming of these particular pictures, and we'll practice drawing these four, okay? So that will finish lesson one for us.